welcome to a new episode of the Wellbeing in Education podcast. In this episode, we hear about a long-term project between the staff at West Suffolk College and a company called Cycol to embed the concept of character strengths across the whole setting. Over to my guests to introduce themselves. Hey, so if I could start by asking you to introduce yourself, please. So, Claire? Hi, so my name is Claire Darwin and I'm the Principal Educational Psychologist here in Suffolk. Uh, thank you, Claire. And Johan? Hi, I'm Johan Rees and I'm uh, Chief Exec at Cycle.com and we support schools and leaders and colleges um, across the UK and further afield to build a culture of high performance and psychological safety. Great, thank you, Johan. And Lucy? Uh, hi, my name is Lucy Fowler-Mead and I'm a lecturer in teacher education at West Suffolk College. Thank you. So um, if I can start off then, Lucy, by asking you a bit about um, the process that you've gone through around character strengths um, at West Suffolk College um, and how that's become embedded as part of everything you do there. Well, this is a, a big uh, question to think about because it's been uh, a huge process for the college starting, I think, four years ago. So it's a massive project where our principal asked the cycle team to come in to help embed um, the concept of character strengths into the college culture, which is part of our mission statement, our three pillars of our mission statement at the college. Uh, part of that to do with training, qualifications, achievement, but also the character strengths and uh, helping our learners build those skills to succeed as, as individuals. Um, and uh, the cycle team came in and um, that first session, um, I wasn't there actually, and uh, Claire and Owen were there together. Um, I don't know if you want to say a bit about that first session, Claire? Yeah, no, I mean, Owen came in, like, just like you say, it was um, in the summer of 2017, actually, initially. And we spoke with the entire college. I think we ran three sessions and um, we ran group activities in those sessions, seeking the views of staff, all college staff irrespective of kind of where they worked in the college um, around their use or their understanding and their use of character strengths in their work in their daily work and um, uh, a lot came out of that session and the, the second um, uh, PD session that we had I was there for that one and we met in in a group then and we did a thematic analysis from what came out from that initial thoughts about character strengths and there was there was anxiety from the staff a little bit because they just didn't feel confident with the language yet it was all new and how were we best to make sense of that and we came up with several themes which included staff perception, student perception, quality assurance, engagement with the community and employers all came up as themes. So we had uh, different projects with small groups initially uh, working within these different areas. How can we embed character strengths in these areas? Um, and then we uh, ran a full year of that. And then the second year we brought in the coaching model. I don't know if Claire wants to talk about the coaching a bit. Yes, yeah, so that was part of the cycle program. So it's a kind of training, coaching, mentoring. Um, and we trained a whole group of cycle leads. So we identified cycle leads across the college and we trained them into coaching methodology. And in fact, that I mean, there were job roles called innovation coaches and it kind of dovetailed in really well. The commitment from the college in terms of bringing in coaching and then also dovetailing that into the cycle methodology. I don't know what Yoan wants to talk a bit about that, but coaching is fundamental, isn't it, um, Yoan, to the model, the cycle model? Absolutely, yeah. It's, a, it's about empowering, and the, and, the, and the coaching model lends itself well to that. It's about empowering staff in order to empower students and to give them the ownership over what they're doing so that they feel that there's value in it and and that it's it brings a great deal of satisfaction. And I think good coaching does that because it it gives people the opportunity to reflect on their solutions and their ideas uh, about what best works in their context rather than being a prescriptive model about you should be doing this so it's about enabling and empowering and the coaching offered that um 
Yeah, the, the, the coaching roles that uh, developed in college have been hugely important because of that ideology and supporting staff, because it's um, always difficult for staff. And me and Claire found that with the PD sessions that staff are pulled in so many different directions. So the supporting of each other uh, in their development was so important and um, sharing ideas, sharing practice. And we saw people, new people in departments wanting to join the projects and be part of it, gaining confidence from their colleagues. And um, the the college has em embodied this coaching um, uh, role to uh, support all new staff coming in uh, from all different subject areas. So they all get that support. Uh, and all of that, uh, within all of that, is is the importance of character strengths as mm. well. So it has been a huge part of the of the college, really. I think that was really apparent on that first day when we um, ran the sort of workshops where we sought people's views around character strengths. It really um, kind of became obvious to us all that the character strengths, they're not just for students. The character strengths were for adults, students, and not even if you had a job that had direct contact with students. And that was one of the, I think, one of the big kind of learning points from that day one that we took into the innovation groups. Yes, definitely that we had um, uh, HR uh, representatives were in and they were yeah. talking about the character strengths. And now if uh, anybody applies for a job at the college as part of their application, they must discuss the character strengths, what it means for them and how they're thinking they're going to bring that into their teaching role. Um, in the, the library staff have made sure that it is in the library that they're talking about character strengths in that capacity and the college admissions team as well that when students are being recruited uh, or uh, applying um, that they are thinking about that from day one mm -hmm. as well so and um, sorry the support systems at college as well this is one of the ways that it has been standardized across the college mm -hmm. is that all students uh, as part of their um, personal development with their support tutors, they must set smart targets to do with character strengths. And that is every single student. So it is a, a standardised approach across quality assurance, HR, support staff, library. It's um, uh, been in many different departments. Brilliant. So just from that one initial meeting, it sounds like it's snowballed and the momentum has carried it through almost every, well, every aspect of the college, it sounds like. That's fantastic. Yeah. I think that was an important element of it because West Suffolk College already had set up a, what we call a core framework. So they already had a very clear mission, vision, mission and a set of values. And um, the initial discussions all took place before that August and it became very clear to us to set up that very first initial training with every single member of college invited that was a key mm. element wasn't it Yoan back back then <laughs> definitely they had they had that they had a very clear ambition and there was great clarity there already across the organization about what they wanted as outcomes for the students and for staff so that made our work very easy uh, to be honest and um, what the, the, one of the central interesting questions um, when we're looking at character strengths in particular is oftentimes um, some organisations might think that these are things that we have to, of course, nurture and develop. But another way of asking the question is to get to character strengths is to ask what character attributes or strengths would we expect and hope to see emerge as a result from a student or member staff being present within an organization with this vision mission and values promise so what would we what so in effect character strengths that have been described today and attributes are, are the outcomes of this culture um, and that that's helpful in the in the sense that it shifts our perspective from um, encouraging people to become to uh, setting the conditions and the environment where they emerge and I think that's a really helpful mind shift for some people. So it's about them taking ownership then about their area. And we've already heard about the library, their area and their context and ask, is, is this conducive? Is what we're doing here conducive towards supporting these attributes and strengths to be developed and grow um, rather than us actually trying to get people to be different <laughs> yeah. per se it's about looking at what we what we are providing as an environment and, and the culture mm -hmm. so it's not so much about individuals it's about the 
spaces around them, the environment around them and the systems around them, it sounds like, and, and getting the culture there. Yeah, it's a bit like sometimes I think of a garden, you know, if, if you have if you have sun and uh, rain and good soil, then you're going to get good plants. And, um, you know, the, the conditions need to be there for us to have the best outcomes. And that's what it's like in a college. It's about setting those conditions that are our vision, mission and values. And then we can describe the plants as, as the strengths that we're seeing emerge uh, and being grown and nurtured. So, yeah, I, I see it that way rather than, you know, thinking um, about, OK, we've got to get everybody being having the same attributes as the same strengths, um, but rather seeing it as an outcome. Mm. As well. right. I definitely feel that um, that that has uh, uh, happened at the college, exactly that. Mm. Um, and a couple of really nice examples I spoke to. I did an interview with a learner on a film production course and he was a um, very confident boy, very articulate. But what had happened is that he had been given the opportunity to be on a film set, making a film locally with um, two professional directors and uh, just been given that opportunity, that environment and those uh, resources around him, he had just absolutely blossomed and he had um, been given different work opportunities afterwards. And he came on to chat to me about how it was transformative really for him to just be able to set off. He was ready to go. You know, he was ready to be in industry and doing it. And then um, another learner I spoke to on um, foundation to learning. So this is uh, a learner that had for um, different reasons, had difficult time at school and not been able to get into um, get through GCSEs. So uh, and this learner, it was not really talking about the the, the terms of character strengths, talking about um, ambition, achievement, confidence. It was more relational, the environment in the classroom and his relationship with his tutor, you could see that she um, allowed this sense of um, value, belonging, um, understanding of each other, very high levels of mutual respect. And that environment was what was uh, helping him blossom and his confidence, he came and uh, he did a little um, interview on camera for me, which was turned into a pr promotional video. So the fact that his confidence and um, uh, ambition had increased because of this sense in the classroom the environment that he was he was in every day so I completely mm. agree with that uh, idea of the environment we create it uh, yeah. creates the outcome for the learners yeah yeah uh, and that, that's perfect because it's about going back to the metaphor the garden it's about it's about the gardener isn't it really creating that environment um, yeah. it's not it's not the fault of the it's not the fault of the flower uh, so it's it's about us being prepared to look at what we're doing that can help grow and, and nurture that. So that, those are really good examples. Thank you. Yeah, they were great. And what was lovely when we undertook sort of like literally walks around the college, mm -hmm. uh, we could see lots of um, like noticing strengths. So noticing when character strengths were being used. So Lucy's given those great examples. And there were many more, weren't there, Lucy, on posters or in news um, your news bulletins, um, yes. framed, literally framed around the college's um, premises. You could see lots and lots of examples of noticing, which was yes. great. It was very good fun just to walk around <laughs> the college and look for that. And um, it was everywhere and it was so nice. Uh, there was a lot of celebration of learners. So there was sort of case study posters, what this mm -hmm. learner did next, what was their individual growth. And it would have a theme like confidence, um, uh, achievement, optimism. Um, and uh, then there would be student of the week posters as well. So that would be something that changed each week, obviously. And uh, their specific goals that they had been working on and their achievements. Um, so that was lovely to see. Uh, the hospitality area was incredible. They had a whole wall and they really brought in things to do with industry then. So um, ownership, self-control, um, all part of how you succeed in industry, applying for jobs, looking at changes in industry, uh, events that were happening. And it was all linked up to this really beautiful wall of uh, ideas and opportunities all coming together. So it was it was a, a very enjoyable thing just to walk around and see how it was embedded. It's in every classroom as well. So you have the standardised approach, but also people doing their own thing. And um, this is one of the things that colleges like West Suffolk College can embrace so fully 
is the huge variety of courses, subject areas, learners, level of learning, so many different contexts that when you um, explore uh, uh, an idea of the character strengths, the diversity of response is amazing and it's so mm. much fun. And all the time I'm hearing of new ideas coming up. So you get the standardized approach that everyone is uh, on board with supporting and nurturing but then also these amazing little projects that people are doing and um, seen tokens badges on people's lanyards but they've collected uh, uh, you know it's been celebrated that they've shown this um, uh, ambition optimism curiosity um, I've seen uh, in lessons lollipop sticks with the different themes on and they each pick one out and they don't know what they're going to get and then they talk about that at the start of the lesson um, I've seen um, video projects where people have explored their own ambitions for the future. There's been so much diversity and that's why the college uh, is such a great um, environment like that mm. to have a difference of approach, very creative. And so that all sounds absolutely fantastic and it, you kind of already touched on it. What has the impact of all that been on well-being for students, for staff, maybe even for a wider community? I think it um, well, I like to think about it uh, um, and uh, you might have others might have other ideas of how to expand on this. But the language of um, positive mental health and talking about uh, what what we can support ourselves with, what we can build on, what we can grow. Um, English and maths uh, is, a, is an area where they work very, very hard with um, learner self-esteem and thinking about if you know, you're retaking learners are retaking their English and maths it can be really demoralizing for some learners and changing that um, growth mindset. I know they're very keen on that and the language of the character strengths. What, how can we change how we feel about ourselves and our futures? Um, and the, the, this language of positive mental health, I think has a huge impact of thinking about what they can do next, what will happen next. As, as that's really been an, um, a huge thing for that particular area. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. So very much building them up now to prepare them for leaving college, adulthood and carrying that forward. Fantastic. So, um, yeah, and you touched on the kind of um, systemic psychology um, behind this approach. Is there any other um, aspects of the psychology around this that you'd like to talk a bit more about? Yeah, I think Lucy's picked up on some there, to be honest, and saying, you know, the impact of this on the well-being um, of students and staff alike. And I think that, um, you know, it's about, I, I liked what she said very much about it being standardised, yet there's space for innovation as well. And that suggests that people feel safe um, if they feel safe to express themselves. And um, so one strong tenet of our work, the work that Claire has been doing there with Psycho, is about embedding this psychological safety, not, not as a standout feature per se but as an outcome again and the underpinning of psychological safety which comes from the work by the way of Amy Edmondson and a study done by Google they wanted to find out what why teams felt safe or not and it, it's about really people feeling safe to make mistakes feeling safe to express themselves and in Google for example they determined that where well-being was to be seen, where people felt happiest and were most productive, was when they felt safe um, to make, even make mistakes, which is fine, and to pivot. So psychological safety is one absolutely key element of our work. Um, and the other thing is around agile working. So, you know, again, go, goes back to safety. It's about is it okay for us to change what we're doing? Um, is it is it okay to be iterative in our approach? Are we stuck? So we can be standardized and agile at the same time. And I'd, I'd just say the last thing, um, well, two more things. First of all is, is to cultivate that mindset that Lucy talked about, the solution-oriented mindset. And that's not to say that we don't notice problems. So if people feel well and better when their hurt or their suffering or their shame or blame is is acknowledged uh, and we stand with them to look for solutions so that that sensible balance uh, we look for and the very last thing is is this 
collective leadership where where people students and themselves as well have ownership over making decisions and people feel that they can lead on what's important to them and that we know that that when people are disempowered it doesn't end well uh, in terms of their well-being um, so when we empower people uh, then actually well-being goes up so all of those combine like a little venn diagram if you like to create a culture where well-being can flourish and i think that the, the examples that lucy's given today and, and the work that claire's done has really resulted in that in in west Suffolk college clearly yeah we worked with teams as well didn't we lucy so we had the sort of whole college at the beginning and then we had um smaller innovation teams so in the first stages of the project i would visit regularly and met with that team and that's when we were able to talk about things that were going well things that maybe needed kind of some improvement um, mm -hmm. and we talked together as a group and lucy used to attend those sessions as well and so we were able to sort of in a mentoring relationship talk through issues so it's like the whole small groups then influencing, you know, sort of going and doing their work in college and then Lucy and I's working relationship. Yeah, it worked very, very well. Um, and um, we were able to meet every term and every PD day at the college. We would have a set, uh, we would have a slot of time where all our co all our leads could come and uh, uh, feedback on how they were doing, new ideas, um, sometimes projects took a new direction. And, yeah. um, uh, that was interesting to follow as well um, and we would often have a member of senior management come and join mm -hmm. us uh, several times we would have um, a senior manager come in to hear how the projects were going but mm -hmm. sometimes they just came to be in with the group and to support what was happening um, and often Claire would deliver part of their cycle program mm -hmm. and then we would um, have like a seminar afterwards talking about it and I, my role I saw really was just collecting together everything that everyone was doing and summarizing it and we would keep track on the uh, specific cycle forms to track the progress of mm -hmm. each team um, and the structure worked quite well it did go it was more challenging during covid when we were not able to be together because that was the key to it really was all getting together as a group and sharing but we managed that and uh, claire and i were able our relationship meant that we could keep track in that way but it was also interesting to see how the uh, different leads adapted their work in that time. And um, I was asked to be part of a deep dive for the quality assurance of, of the college, looking at, I think it, get, it was hospitality. And I observed an online session and they asked me to feedback specifically on character strengths. And um, I was so impressed with this lesson because it was early on. And I don't know if any of you were involved in sort of the, the, the early online meetings. It was a bit shaky, wasn't it? And people didn't want to say anything and put their cameras on and things like that. And the, the lecturers who are obviously used to teaching in a highly practical environment in a sort of professional space had adapted completely. And the things that stood out to me was the level of reassurance to learners, reassurance mm -hmm. in using the systems uh, that they were uh, wanted and important in the in the conversation, how to, um, you know, online etiquette, how to listen to each other and how to use the chat, uh, but also optimism, because if you remember at that time, the hospitality sector was completely flawed, wasn't it? There was no events happening. Uh, and so the students had just joined this course, not knowing what is their career going to look like. So the level of reassurance um, was vital and made such a big difference in the lesson, in the discussions of the lesson. Um, and the optimism that it is all going to be all right again. <laughs> and they, yeah. were, they were starting to draw more upon their experiences working in different restaurants and things like that. And you could hear the confidence growing as the lesson went on. Oh. So uh, people did adapt to COVID. And then another group, which is Performing Arts, they did a lovely thing where people took, um, instead of the student of the week poster, they would do a selfie. So the student would get a selfie with a prop um, I can't remember exactly what they were called, but the the flamingo of ambition and they'd ha hold up a flamingo in their selfie. Then they'd get a glitter filter and then it would be shared with everybody. So they <laughs> adapted to do these things online and it was very nice to see. Um, uh, but at that time, Claire and I had to adapt as well, how we sort of yeah. monitored and kept track of things and kept our relationship. So it wasn't all plain sailing, but it was great to see how everyone adapted, really. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I have a question, if you may, um, uh, to Claire and Lucy. Um, you know, you said 2017, Claire, which is quite a while ago, isn't it? Okay. And we've had COVID come and go. No. And I was wondering, what would you two put the, sustain, the success in terms of sustainability of this down to? Would it be, for example, that there was structure to it? Or would it be that um, there was, you know, um, permission from the leadership effectively? They had the weight of the leadership backing it from the beginning, and that was important. Or was it something else that that I'm, I'm just curious to understand what your ideas there because there will be people listening here saying oh we've tr we tried something similar and mm. it fizzled out a bit it was a bit of an initiative it doesn't sound to me like this has been an initiative for you it's become more of a part a way of being and I was just wondering what do you think have been the main things that have helped it become sustainable and natural organic per se Yes, well, I can I can definitely say um, from my point of view, there's been a bit of um, both that um, uh, joining this podcast today earlier um, last week, I got an email from um, my manager, uh, the director of teacher development and research at West Suffolk College. So excited that I was doing the podcast, talking about character strengths, the new ideas for the future. So there definitely has been uh, that clarity of message all this time from our managers. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, uh, about the, the the importance of character strengths and our three pillars in our mission statement, um, but also I think that Claire and I and the the all the people involved did adapt and we went with the way it was going instead of trying to claw everybody back saying no we're doing it this way you've got to make you've got to make sure that you're doing this type of uh, project or this outcomes we went with what was happening and allowed the creativity and captured that rather than trying to to force so i think uh, it was some of the structures and also the being adaptable and seeing what yeah. is live what is happening so anyway, were you were you confident to adapt because you had a clear vision of what you wanted because if you if you're clear that you want to go up the mountain right and get to the top then maybe it doesn't much matter which route you take because the goal is the most yeah. important you know that's the mission is the most important thing to achieve whereas sometimes when we aren't so clear about that we get caught up in the today and the here and now and the little battles that we need to win about which path so um would you say that the goal that the vision was quite a, quite clear for you so you are prepared to adapt and pivot etc yeah i definitely uh, i think that uh, the 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 mission was clear but also i think uh uh, Claire was a driving force and kept in contact and maybe just the, the pair of us uh, didn't didn't let it drop you know yeah. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> kept going that. that's yeah, a character think, strength yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. well I just think what you're saying like there was commitment from leadership from the fact that there was a core framework so there is a core framework really clear you know your vision mission values and pillars um so there's structure and cycle so cycle is very solution oriented um, it's very kind of there's a, a real structure there, framework there. And I put flexibility and a working relationship based on dedication and also passion for the work. Like Lucy's very passionate about her work. I'm very passionate. And that kept us going, I think, despite having to kind of like change our, change the way that we did things. And listening to you all there, there's something very strong coming through about your own psychological safety, Lucy and Claire, that you had from all of those things you just mentioned. It was making you feel safe enough, Lucy, to change, to adapt the way you were approaching it. And to take those risks. Yes, it was like a really, um, it was rewarding in cycle. We look at like standards. So we'd look at performance, we'd look at the way things are done, whether they're value based. But the really important one in this context is about it being rewarding. So the work was really rewarding, seeing seeing how the college were taking like the embedding of character strengths so seriously across all um, parts of the college is incredibly rewarding. You could see when Lucy was describing doing the walk around the college to see that energy. So it was rewarding for us. And I think it was rewarding for the people, you know, obviously people at the college. Amazing. Now, is there anything else that any of you wanted to talk about or discuss before we wrap up? I wanted to thank everyone at the college because we had we had innovation groups led by we call them green belt in the first year. I don't know if anyone wants to talk about the belt system and the blue belt and then uh, sort of black belts are more kind of um, versed in cycle methodology. 
And so we had a team of, of green belt and blue belt cycle leads. And as well as wanting to thank Lucy, I'd want to thank everyone there because they were really um, you know, pivotal as well, weren't they, Lucy, in their influence? Yes, they, uh, everyone was really generous, giving up their time and um, all their different ideas and creativity on top of, you know, busy teaching days. Um, uh, and th there was a lot of there was a lot of passion and enthusiasm for it. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I'd like to agree with Claire and say thank you very much to Wester for college. Uh, and, you know, it, it's a big organisation mm. and um, it's no mean feat to get something that's going to take hold so so successfully and i think it just reminds me about the best things in life are simple and and that you know to stick with it and the the character strength that both these ladies have demonstrated themselves have been a good example to everybody who's engaged with the work so thank you to you and to all the colleagues that i haven't even met some mm -hmm. of them at west Suffolk college for for doing the work so well well thank you for coming and working with us and sticking with us <laughs> <laughs> Pleasure. Thank you. So that brings us to the end of another episode. It's been fantastic to hear about how this work has supported student and staff wellbeing. If you've been inspired and would like to find out more about how this kind of whole setting wellbeing support could work for you, please use the contact information below to get in touch.